Just an hour's drive west of Calgary is the Canadian Rocky Mountains. For many years, it had been the dream of three amateur radio operators to put a repeater high atop one of her mighty peaks. A repeater that would cover the entire Banff National Park and surrounding area. On July 17, 1991, after several postponements, Tony Mountjoy V6MX, Ken Olke V6AFO, and Doug Howard VE6CID, along with several other Calgary Radio amateur volunteers, would attempt to install Canada's highest repeater atop Protection Mountain overlooking the Lake Louise area. The following video will take you to that 9700 foot mountain peak to the site of VE6 HWI, a totally solar powered repeater located on 147.33 MHz. You will get a unique perspective of the coordination and teamwork necessary to tackle this job. It is to this group of volunteers who gave of their time and equipment that this video is dedicated. As well, it is dedicated to the memory of Mark Dickinson, pilot with Canadian helicopters, who was tragically killed in this area December 25th, 1991. Yeah, we're all, we're all organisers of the 16 fy um, Hopefully this will be the, the, the right day. We've had two abortive attempts and we haven't made it out here because of the weather, the fog, the snow, the rain. But today we've got blue skies. Let's hope it bodes well for us. Um, the 16 fy Doug, uh, just kind of curious, do you know how many vehicles are going to be coming out here? We probably have another five or six vehicles, so we're going to have to park them in real tight when we pull into the turnoff because there's not really a lot of room in there and we've got to have a little bit more room for um, Albert and also for the truck that's going to be taking all the other stuff. Yeah, that sounds like a, a good plan. So I'll just follow you and as you pull in, I'll pull in behind you. It's a beautiful sunny day and here we are at Baker Creek uh, pull-off here and we're about to, waiting for the helicopter to ascend Protection Mountain to install a new repeater. I have with me uh, Ken. Ken Oki, uh, VE6AFO, and uh, exactly what are we going to be doing here today, Ken? Yeah, well, we're here to uh, remove a, a large uh, antenna system for one and uh, find a new home. Actually, uh, the, the first home for V6HWI on top of this 9700 peak, 9700 feet. So, uh, as you can see, we have uh, a big operation in the background here, uh, many people involved, a lot of equipment, and uh, it's going to be an all-day operation, Steve. Our batteries for our uh, repeater operation here, you uh, built and designed the boxes for them. Well, yes, as it turned out, though, they, uh, they found that they were going to require more batteries than originally anticipated for this particular project, so uh, the boxes that were built for this particular project will be now used for the portable repeater. So, uh, as in good old uh, amateur uh, um, tradition, the uh, last minute itis uh, was brought to fore and they, uh, they came up with an alternative method for the batteries that are required for this particular repeater, so there's an, you know, a larger number of batteries that are taken up on the on the mountain for this project than uh, were originally anticipated. So that was nice to be part of the project anyway, and it's sure fun to be out here. In spite of the fact that we had to get up early in the morning, I wouldn't miss this for anything. Good. Thank you very much. And you're going to be part of our ground crew. You and betcha. I'll be uh, part of the original ground crew, and uh, hopefully uh, everything will go well. The uh, weather's cooperating, and uh, here comes the helicopter right now. As a matter of fact. Oh, good. And we'll just move over, and here comes our transportation now, which will be taking us to uh, the top of Protection Mountain. Safety is always the utmost requirements when working around helicopters. In preparation for today's events, all team members took a helicopter safety course in Calgary one month previous. Canadian helicopters pilot Bob Johnson takes an additional 10 minutes to once again rebrief everyone. E6SL, who uh, works for CFCN Television, 
and I guess is our official project coordinator. That's right, Steve. Looks like we're on a roll today. We finally got this little project off the ground. It's taken, what, about four tries now? Four Wednesdays in a row we've been trying to do this. And uh, the weather is excellent. Looks like it's going to be a super day. Good. Uh, what are you doing on behalf of CFCN? I'm more or less looking after the, the whole project as far as the television side goes and coordinating the loads going up and down and the work to be done on top of the mountain and uh, in what order things are going to happen. Right now what's happening is that uh, with the installation of a repeater, VHF repeater, for the Banff Park, it's becoming a culmination of a lifetime dream to have a repeater system that will cover the Banff National Park. So. This is really quite a thrilling day, and with our location on Protection Mountain, we're sure that we're going to get the coverage that we're looking for. And after many, many hours of work and uh, <clears throat> putting equipment together, we should have at least the first step in this area. We know that perhaps not everything's going to work perfectly for the whole year, but we're sure counting on getting a good operation from the machine with the system we put together presently. Okay, uh, what are we doing right now with the uh, the net behind us here? Well, the net behind us presently is taking the first load up by the helicopter. We have on it the solar panel, the coax cables for our repeater and CFCN at this point, the duplexer, and some of the tools that will be required for the work that has to be done at the top end of this particular project. Okay, and that will be uh, slung underneath the helicopter and... And, and carry and up as a first load. I imagine that they'll have several building, or several trips, I'm sorry to say, or sorry, to take up. And uh, it's quite a massive project. There's a Channel 9 antenna which has to come down. There's a old CFCN building which has to come down, providing that they can get their uh, thermal generation hooked up to the new building successfully and properly installed. So there'll be a lot of heavy stuff coming down from the top to help get things cleaned up. And whilst going on, of course, we'll be working on the amateur side of the project and getting the VHF repeater installed, the coax cables laid out, and, and uh, batteries put into place, and so on. So it'll be a very specifically coordinated type function with everyone having to do their job to get the thing done within the time allotment available. Quite a project. I'm here again with uh, Max Farmer, the 6SL. Uh, Max, how many trips do you figure it's going to take to uh, get us all up to the top here? I believe we'll probably have 15 or 20 trips in before the end of the day, up, uploading and downloading and so on and so forth. Oh yes, so it's going to be a busy day for the helicopter. So right now we're just taking a group shot all in front of the helicopter here. We're just about getting ready to uh, take off. It's going to be a busy day for everybody. Everybody's excited and just rip sore and ready to go here. We'll be uh, up there in 15 minutes and it's going to be a long day. We've got a lot of work to do but we're going to have a lot of fun doing it. Good. Thanks a lot, Max. And uh, The new VE6 HWI repeater will be on the air probably in a couple hours. I'm here with uh, Doug Howard, VE6 CID, uh, Ken Oki, VE6 AFO, and Tony Mountjoy, VE6 MX. And we're standing here with uh, the repeater that we're going to place on the top of Production Mountain. Uh, Ken, can you just tell us a little bit about the repeater? Well, actually, probably... Uh, Doug might do better in uh, explaining things. Uh, he assembled this. I'll hold it for him and he can... Uh... This here is the VHF uh, part of the system. It's the, it's the main receiver or uh, transmitter, the bottom part here. We have uh, a receiver built in a package here. So uh, the unit draws 104 milliamps, including the controller to run the power supply. On transmits, it's 3.465 uh, uh, amps, so it's uh, it's pretty low in the operations. During um, we have a, here we have a solar innovation controller which controls the solar cell, and it uh, turns off at 11.7. The whole unit will turn off if we run into trouble. Um, otherwise, we should be a-ok, -okay, and the operating voltage will be 14.51 during normal conditions. Okay, Doug, what type of controller are we using with this package? We're using the SCOM controller. It's called the 5K. It contains many functions that can be programmed remotely, which we really need here. Yeah, for a mountaintop site. Yeah. Okay, and uh, how many batteries are we going to have up top to uh, supply power? 
We're, we're going to have six batteries containing 525 amp hours. Hopefully that will be enough to uh, operate the system year round. Good. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Let's get this thing up top and mounted. Okay, the extra safety belt, put it through these. While you sit back and enjoy the approximately five minute helicopter ride up Protection Mountain, here's a brief history on the repeater site. In 1967, as a centennial project, the newly formed Lake Louise Television Association, together with CFCN Television in Calgary, installed a one watt repeater site atop 9,700 foot Protection Mountain. At that time, caustic potash batteries were used and had to be changed every year. In 1970, CFAC Television joined CFCN high atop this peak. 1978 saw CJAY FM Calgary added, and in 1980, a new source of power, thermal electricity, was installed to power the three stations. In 1982, a second building was added to the mountaintop. This to house CBC and their one watt translator, along with caustic potash batteries. Unfortunately, the site never proved to be reliable for CBC, and even after adding the 40 foot by 20 foot parabolic antenna, they could not quite squeeze in enough signal to give a good television picture in the Lake Louise area. It is because of this that they abandoned the site and gave the building and towers and antenna to the Lake Louise TV Association. This is how CARA, the Calgary Amateur Radio Association, got involved. Today this group of amateur radio volunteers will be attempting to remove the old parabolic antenna system left behind by CBC, thus saving the Lake Louise Television Association thousands of dollars in antenna removal costs. In return, CARA will be given space to house the new VHF repeater in the old CBC building, along with CFCN Television, CJAYFM, and 2 and 7 Calgary Television. By this point, two groups of personnel had already been dropped off to begin the work of dismantling the old shack, which previously housed the two TV and one FM station, and they had already started clearing the CBC shack. In order to maximize the use of helicopter flying time, as soon as each new group of personnel and equipment was dropped off, the helicopter was loaded with old equipment and garbage to be taken back down to the staging area. Y V 6 DRC. Well, we're uh, up on the top here, and boy, you wouldn't believe the view. It's incredible. Uh, I imagine Doug will probably have something to say about that too. But uh, I'm going to have to kind of keep it short because we got a pretty big load ahead of us here. We got to start cleaning up the place. V 6 DRC V 6 T Z Y. Well, I've got the binoculars on you, and I can just see people at the top of the tower. But other than that, we're the rest of it is left to our imagination. Are you about Doug to tell us what it's like? V60, ID V60, is that why? Yeah, it's just unreal. I'm just here inside the shack, uh, just peering out through the door, working on the machine here inside. And, um, it's pretty awesome. V6 uh, TZY, V6 CID. Got, kind of got to get back to work. You want the other one too? While some of the care group was removing the old CBC caustic potash batteries left behind, 2 and 7 television and CFCN personnel were installing new and longer transmission lines into this new building. 
As well, Tony and Doug were installing the repeater system, the new batteries, and mounting the solar cells on the roof. After all personnel had been taken to the top, the pilot could start taking loads up and down the mountain in nets slung beneath the helicopter. As can be seen as soon as one load was dropped off, mountaintop crews had another load ready to be taken back down to the staging area. The 60ZY, VE60RC. Uh, you should have a load coming down now. We got our first uh, load of miscellaneous garbage off the mountain here, so it uh, should be coming down to you in a couple of minutes there. And uh, you wouldn't believe the view we've got looking through Jens's camera, or Jens's camera. It's unbelievable. I can almost see what kind of coffee you're drinking. V60 RC, V60 ZY. Can you see his decal? V60 RC, V60 ZY. The helicopter's on its return trip with the antennas that'll go up on the hill. Yeah, V60 ZY, V6 CID. I'll inform Ken and Howard that the, the uh, helicopter's on its way up. Everybody hold on to your hats, here he comes now. And uh, Ken, Howard, you guys hold on to your hats too. The helicopter's on its way in. and final nuts and bolts are being removed from the big array, the Channel 9 antenna. Ken and Howard are just about ready to start lowering the antenna down, the old CBC receive antenna. CBC started out originally using Sinclair Yagi antennas and found they did not pick up enough signal for what they were trying to do and switched over to the uh, parabolic receive antenna. This antenna is about 20 feet by 40 feet and as you can see, one section is about to be lowered now. The original design of this antenna used three quarter inch aluminum rods for the reflector assembly. And that was later changed to a screen material to make the holes in the back smaller for the higher frequency to capture more signal on channel nine. The antenna itself had six dipoles, and this was not enough to capture approximately 400 to 1,000 microvolts needed for a good, strong television signal. So the decision was made by the CBC to abandon the site and later relocate their transmission facilities in the town of Lake Louise. V60 CID, do you copy? Go ahead, Doug. V60 ZY. Yeah, okay, Alan. Just want to let you know that uh, the guys have got the first uh, section of the antenna down, and uh, it's lying on the ground. And we're uh, only going to take down one section uh, at first and send it down to you so you can uh, take it all apart down there. We've got a problem. You were going to take it down at the top. You've got all the tools. 
I suppose we'll manage somehow, but I dread to think what we're going to do. But we've no choice, have we? See they watch. Yeah, Roger. Well, if we have to, we can take it apart when we get down there too, when we get all the all the tools off of here. But the weather is coming in. It's uh, pretty cloudy up here. CID clear. I'm here with uh, Alan Faint, the 6 tzy He's going to be part of our ground crew here. Uh, what part are you going to be playing down here on the ground? Supervising everybody else, but also running uh, an HF special event station for VE6HWY, hoping to make a few contacts for the one day only, while the rest of the guys are putting it up on the air. Ah, oh, good. And uh, and your your wife Marlene, I. She's going to be our uh, footprint person who's going to uh, map out the coverage area for us? That's right. There are a lot of people know about it, and as soon as it's activated, people will be working through it and letting us know where they are so that she can mark it out on the map so we can get some idea. It's going to be months before we really know what the coverage is. Okay. Thank you very much. ZY 6 brc uh, just for your information here, uh, we got both antennas down, and Howard and Ken are just trying to get down the I-beams right now, and uh, as far as I can tell, it looks like the solar cells are just about installed, Doug and Tony are just about got them put up, and uh, we should be on the air pretty soon, 6 tzy 6 brc V6-DLC, V6-TZY, it looks a bit murky up there from down here. We can't see anything. What in fact is happening to the weather? Funny you should mention that. It's actually turned into a blizzard here. Over the last maybe 15 or 20 minutes, it's been beautiful sunshine. It's been snowy. It's back to sunshine. Now it's snowing again. And I bet you there's probably about a 50 or 60 kilometer an hour wind bringing that snow in. Boy, it's just rotten. Okay, I won't keep you from it. G6, we will see V6, T's at one. Yeah! Need a hand over here again. You pooped. 
Yeah. Well, it's a long day up there. It's been a long day, yes. Yeah. Clear. 